So. Today we're talking about using our gifts, using especially, in particular, our spiritual gifts. And for the last couple of months, we have been focusing on what it means to be sold out for Jesus or sold out for God. And what it means is we're completely surrendered to him in every way. Our money, time, our dreams, our relationships, possessions and our gifts, everything about us belongs to him and is ready available for his purposes so up until now we've looked at topics like mission tithing our using our possessions prayer time management living uncomfortably stepping out of faith kingdom living and being spirit led and if there's messages that you haven't heard or you want to relook at Jump on our website, go under the resources tab, you'll see the sermon audio there and have a listen to those, um, those talks. So being sold out for God does include how we use our talents and our gifts. So what am I talking about when I speak about spiritual gifts? So if we look at 1 Corinthians 12, which is probably one of the more famous you know, important passages about gifts says this from the New King James there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit there are differences of ministries but the same Lord and there are diversities of activities but it is the same God who works all in all but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of gifts, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. But the one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. And if you look at other passages as well, besides <coughs> excuse me, the one in Romans, you'll find there are also gifts about hospitality, encouragement, leadership, creative communication, teaching and shepherding. So when we talk about spiritual gifts, I think we need to remember a few things and highlight a few things. All gifts come from God. They are given to us by the Holy Spirit. The message version says in verse 11, all these gifts have a common origin, but are handed out one by one by the one Spirit of God. He decides who gets what and when. And that's very important. He decides who gets what and when. But for me, the great thing for me is God knows me and knows what 
talents and spiritual gifts I need to use for him. He knows me. He knows my passions. He knew me, my passions, before I was even born. The gifts we receive are given by God, by our God, who knows us more intimately than we can imagine. Psalm 139, David praises God as he declares that you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He knows exactly what we need. And he knows what's possible. The thing is, Spiritual gifts are not the same as natural talents. Talents are possessed by saved and unsaved people. We are all born with talents of some sort. Gifts, spiritual gifts, are possessed by those who are saved by grace. They are ones who are in relationship with God that <coughs> the Holy Spirit can work with. Talents are developed and expected. But spiritual gifts are matured and surprising. So let's say you're a talented leader and then you become a Christian. If God decides to use you in some role, you might find that talent that you have is greatly multiplied when God also gives you the spiritual gift of leadership and will take you above and beyond what you never thought was expected. God can surprise us that way. We can all develop our natural talents through hard work and through perseverance. We practice and train along the way we can achieve the expected results. But spiritual gifts, on the other hand, are increased as we mature in our relationship with God. It's very different. Talents can be used for self. They can be used selfishly. Whereas spiritual gifts, gifts from God, are to be used for God's purpose. So it's not about us, it's all about God. The gifts are there so that God, not us, will be praised. Paul is very clear when he says to the Corinthian church, each person is given something to do that shows who God is. In Matthew 5, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. And see, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Not praise us for what we do, but praise our Father in heaven. So the gifts we are given are to use for common good so that others will see and know God through us, through you and me. And that's why we've been blessed with what we have in spiritual gifts. But I must admit, this is an area that at times I have struggled with through, through different times of my life. There are times that I have struggled because of pride. Pride in what I can do and what I have done. Many years ago, I would only go to a church service if I was playing music. And if I wasn't playing, I wouldn't bother going. There were quite a lot of churches on the north side of Brisbane who would be consistently ringing me up saying, come and play. I even had a, a Catholic priest ask if I would like to convert to Catholicism so that I can come to their church each week and <laughs> take over from where this old lady was playing the whole time. And as a young adult, that was good to hear, and, but it put a huge chip on my shoulder. How good am I? So every time I played in those churches, God had nothing to do with what I was doing. It was all about me. I was shining the light all right, but I was drinking it myself and not God. And there came to a point when I realised what I was doing. So I actually went to the other extreme. I stopped doing anything in case I was doing it for the wrong motives. I was that humble. Now once again, I listened to the cry because I was so I was so proud that I was so humble, and that I was doing nothing for my own gain. So I had to get the balance right, and it has taken many years, and I still struggle at times with some of these things. But I can stand here and acknowledge that I'm here 
because of God, not because of me. And I'm here. Yes, I can do certain things, but I praise God that I have to use these gifts as much as possible for His glory and for His glory alone. And that has actually brought real freedom within me, freedom in the worship and joy in what I do. Passion for something doesn't mean that you will be blessed with that gift. You only have to look at some of the hopeful contestants on some of these talent shows to know that they may have a passion for singing. Their mother might say, you sing so beautifully, but the reality is, no, it doesn't happen. Now, our friend with the ha would have a passion with the recorder. He's actually got a brilliant talent to play so badly. <laughs> As a lot of you know, I have spent quite a few years worshipping and being in ministry in um, AOG churches, ACC churches. And I can remember being in a service some time a few years ago when they asked if people would like to come forward and we would pray for them that they would receive the gift of tongues. And a very good friend of mine came forward and our pastor prayed for him for about 10 minutes and nothing happened and he, talked, and he turned around went back to his seat his head was down and he said I don't understand I pray I don't understand let me repeat what Paul says all these gifts have a common origin but are handed out one by one by the one spirit of God he decides who gets what and when it's up to the Holy Spirit not what we want, but what he chooses to impart on us. It's his call, not mine. It's his call. Spiritual gifts are not the same as the fruits of the Spirit. Some people do get really caught up in it, but they're not the same. Spiritual fruit is produced from within. Spiritual gifts are imparted from without. The fruit of the Spirit relates to Christ-like character. Spiritual gifts relate to Christian service. The fruit of the Spirit, though, especially love, should be the context in how we operate the gifts of the Spirit. So love should be the context not our love, but God's love, should be the context for operation of the gifts of the Spirit. Paul made it clear in 1 Corinthians 13 that without that spiritual gifts without spiritual fruit are worthless. Spiritual gifts expressed without love do not reflect who God is. They do not have a kingdom impact. 1 Corinthians 12 from verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually, and God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues and do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts. And yet I show you a more excellent way. And that's how chapter 13 then starts. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I become sanding brass or a clanging symbol. And now I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And now I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Love goes hand in hand with our spiritual gifts. That is the motivation. <coughs> Bill Hybels has this to say about this. The right motivation for Christian service is love. 
when we discover God loves us with an everlasting love and that we matter deeply to him, we want to serve. He has given us salvation as a free gift. He has done for us what we could never do for ourselves. He has shed the blood of his most precious son as a sin sacrifice for undeserving souls like ourselves. When all of that comes together and clicks, an unquenchable, an unquenchable divine energy is infused into the spirit of the believer. There is an, an insatiable desire to return love to God. That love is returned to God through worship and service. It is so natural that anything short of passionate service seems unnatural. He goes on, one major cause of servant dropout is faulty motivation. Some people are motivated to serve because of guilt. They feel bad if they don't do something. So they say yes to soothe their own guilty conscience. Others are motivated by the belief that they must earn their way into God's favour and pave the way to heaven with their good works. There are also those who serve for the applause of people. They want others to notice their service and give them affirmation and praise. With the wrong kind of motivation, you won't be able to keep a servant serving. With the right kind of motivation, you won't be able to stop a servant serving. And it's just about that simple. Our motivation has to be love. Gifts are gifts. They're not rewards. They're not the result of how holy we think we are or how things are. The church at Corinth, even though it was probably the most unholy church written about in the Bible and the New Testament, yet they had all the gifts within that church. In 1 Corinthians 1, verse 7, Therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. Let me remind you again what Paul says. All gifts have a common origin, but are handed out one by one by the one Spirit of God. He decides who gets what and when. So each Christian who has spiritual gifts, and we all have spiritual gifts of some sort, we should be cultivating these gifts. We do this by discovering what they are, by developing them, and then using them whenever we can. Romans 12, verses 3 to 9. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. So in other words, we need to evaluate honestly, examine and test what are our gifts. And we need to consult with others. Do you agree that I have this gift? For as each of us have one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, though many form one body, and each member belongs to all others. So in other words, Recognise how each gift helps the body in its own unique way. They're not all the same. Rick Warren said in his book, In Purpose Driven Life, he said that there are two main problems when thinking about spiritual gifts. One is called gift envy. This means that we compare our abilities and gifts to others. In doing that, we might feel tempted to feel jealous. <coughs> of others or feel dissatisfied with what God has given us. The second problem is gift projection. This happens when you expect other people to have your gift and to do things as you do them and to feel the same way you do about that subject with the same passion because this just isn't going to happen. We are all part of the one body but we are all unique and our gifts that we have been given are unique to us.
but we are all to work together. So it goes on in verse 6. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Don't hold back in using the gifts in practical applications in any way with God's help. Don't hold back. And finally, most importantly, love must be sincere. John MacArthur said this, Godly biblical church growth results from every member of the body fully using his spiritual gifts in submission to the Holy Spirit and in cooperation with other believers. There will always be those who are, who are enormously gifted and hold tremendous potential to impact our community and glow for the kingdom of God. But like the unfaithful steward in Matthew 25, they will bury what they've been given until Jesus returns, at which point they'll hand it back to him looking pretty much like it did when he first gave in the first place. Charles Swindle said this, too many Christians are not serving. When you ask them to do something, they say, well, I'm um, sorry, but that's not my spiritual gift. Trouble is they seem to think they have no spiritual gift because they say that about everything. He goes on to say, Brethren, I tell you the truth in Christ that there are no such gifts as pew warming and sermon or music listening. If you tell me, um, sorry, there are no such gifts as pew warming and sermon or music listening. All of the spiritual gifts are proactive. You will be doing something. If you tell me that you are sold out to the Lord and not doing anything, I will try not to be rude and call you a liar. But I will have to ask you to explain your definition of consecration to me. Part of our culture here at the Dubbo Community Church is that we would recognise all spiritual gifts and give everyone the freedom to use their gifts in all areas of our fellowship in the appropriate way. And so our desire is to help you discover, develop and live up to your giftedness and find the proper place to use your gifts. And so this is why over the next few months, myself and possibly another leader will be spending time with the home groups and all those others who are interested who would like to be a part of this. And we're going to be running a course that originated from Willow Creek, but I've adopted it and massaged it to suit our fellowship and um, where we are at the moment. There'll be some teaching, there'll be some self-examination, there'll be requiring input from others within our family, the fellowship and outside of that as well. And we'll be looking at how we can A, know, develop, and then use our gifts for Christ, for God. We sold out for God in this area. When I've run this course previously, there's been some amazing transformations in people when they realise, wow, I have this gift, I didn't think I had it, and the freedom that came and the joy that came when they started using it and God started working through their lives, they were transformed. And I'm excited to see what the possibilities are in our fellowship and how we can grow and how we can mature and how we can use all of the gifts that God has given us for his glory 